Tim Petrowich is a Marion Daily Republican here with Marion head football coach Kerry Martin. Uh, last conference game of the season coming up, the Carbondale Terriers first reflect a little bit on last week's game, a 63 to nothing win over Centralia. And coach, you did what you wanted to do. You didn't want to let Centralia think they could stay in the game. You jumped on them early and really took care of business right off the bat. Yeah, they uh, they had looked better on film and, and uh, some previous ball games than what we saw on Friday. And sometimes when you're rebuilding a football team, you have nights like that. And and uh, I know Coach Calling uh, felt like they would have a much better showing than that. And I did too, actually. They thought. Uh, they're a better football team than they played, but we played well. And I thought the kids played very aggressive. I think the kids uh, played very fast, and I think you know, homecoming was a good incentive and a good motivator for us. And uh, we executed well on both sides of the ball, and so uh, I'm just real proud of the performance and glad we could get out fairly healthy. Obviously, you know the quarterback was hurt, uh, Greer. They had a backup in that position, but even so, you would expect the team to be able to move the ball a little bit. I unofficially had Centralia for net zero yards and I went back and looked over the stats and there were 13 tackles in that game last week that you tackled them for a loss of yardage. Yeah, the a, defense played outstanding. They did. It was a really good defensive performance and we spent the first half with a really good field position and, and uh, the kids got the ball and did something with it and, and I thought our offensive line really played well in the opening drive and kind of set the tone. So. Um, you know, we didn't do a lot of different things offensively, but it's just good to see us execute our basics and, and just do what we do and, and do it well. And, and again, the defense just, just played very well, very aggressive, uh, very sound, knowing their assignments. And I was just, uh, I just thought the, the staff did a good job of getting the kids ready to play, and they carried it out. I would, uh, it would be a mistake. We always talk about when the varsity offense does well, I think it would be a mistake to not talk about the sophomore offense that actually got you two touchdown drives in the second half. Yeah, they did, they played well. You know, when we talked to them at halftime about, you know, we're gonna make this change and take the starters out and put the younger kids in and some of the non-starters in. And we expected them to just continue to be, you know, we want them to continue to have the same uh, type of success. And that's our goal is to uh, not lower our expectations. We told them, you know, gonna get in the ball game. We expect you to score and, and to run the offense and do the little things you're coached to do every day. And we're gonna coach you just as hard as we do the varsity kids when they're in there. And, and my gosh, they did it. You know, they came out and they played hard and uh, thought they executed the offense very well and made some big plays. And you can't get that kind of experience in a practice setting. It's just invaluable to get them in a varsity game. It is. We love to get them in and get them some reps and uh, <clears throat> give them that varsity experience. And and uh, they got to play almost a half of football. And uh, I think that was good for them. I think it was a good confidence boost for them. And uh, we're real proud of their effort. Carbondale Friday night at Carbondale. And I've uh, the first thing people think of when they think of Carbondale is Kendall Edwards, and he's a special player for he the is. Terriers. Yeah, he's a great running back. He's uh, explosive, he's strong, he's fast, he can do a lot of things, and they rely on him pretty heavily, and I understand why. You know, he's uh, he can do a lot of things for them, and he's uh, had some huge ball games, and they've really leaned on him during some crucial times, and that's the sign of a good football player. And so. They've got a, a, a lot of good things going right now with their offensive line, a good receiver, they got Kendall in the backfield, the quarterback's making good decisions, and, and so they bring a lot to the table that, are, that make them difficult to defend, uh, a lot of different things for us to, to focus on. They're 5-2 and two coming into the game, and I think for a lot of people that's a little bit of a surprise. Do you feel that way, that maybe they're a little better than some people thought? Well, I, I, you know, I thought last year they had an awfully talented team, and I thought last year they showed really signs in, in Coach Custer's first year they were going to make, make some inroads. In, and, and, you know, and I think uh, having been in the, his system for another year now, I think there's a, there's a confidence level. They're playing with a confidence level I didn't see last year and until maybe late in the year. And, and uh, I think they're starting to believe in the things that he's trying to teach them, and uh, he's doing a really good job. I mean, he's got uh, some talented kids. He's got some good speed and size, and they're – some very aggressive players, and um, so I, you know, I'm not surprised. I haven't seen, I hadn't seen much of them until later this season on film, and uh, what I've seen so far, I've been impressed with. 63 to 50 last year. I'm sure that you wouldn't mind scoring 63 points, but I, I'm also sure you don't want to see 50 on the other team, and you'd probably prefer it to be a little bit lower scoring your game. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we, we know as an overall program that was not the, uh, the our best performance. Offensively, we played very well, and, and I was real proud of that. But again, you know, we're not accustomed to giving up points like that. And just, well, it's just a strange night for both football teams. They had played pretty good defense all year as well, and all of a sudden they gave up 63. I mean, it kind of came out of nowhere for both coaching staffs, I think. So 
Um, we expect a close ball game again. We just don't expect it to be that quite high scoring. I think both coaches would agree to that. Uh, there, uh, but you know, offensively last year we did a lot of things well and we were hitting all cylinders. But uh, defensively, I think we're a much improved team over last year's defensive team, and I, I expect our defense to have a good night. You battled this all year, and you'll battle it again this week. Zach Irwin's a little banged up, and talked to Zach a little bit this afternoon, and he wants to try and practice and play. I also know that with the depth that you've got, that we've talked about at running back, that. Uh, you'll probably want to be careful with him like you have that with other players. Yeah, you know, we um, <clears throat> we know that we want Zach in for the long haul, not just for one night. And so if we can try to play this game without him, we're going to try to play it without him. And uh, I don't know what his progress is going to be or what he's going to look like on the field yet. But, you know, we've got some other kids that are ready to go. You know, Holden Real and Shaquille Ivey and, and Justin Ivey, I think, are ready to, to get some more reps. And so if we can give Zach another week off, I hope that we can. Uh, and so we'll have to lean on someone else. And you're right, we've done it all season long. It's not, we have faced a lot of situations where other kids had to step up and play and, and uh, they've done a great job. And so we're just going to continue leaning this time on Holden and Shaq and Justin. Another road game. Uh, you've been home for a couple of weeks, but this is probably a road game you like. It's just 15 miles down the road, not yeah. a long bus trip. And I'm sure there'll be a big uh, following of Wildcat fans there. Yeah, I think so. You know, we expect a big crowd and uh, it's a good place to play. And, and, um, you know, it's a 15-mile bus ride, a whole lot better than the two hours we're accustomed to normally. And so uh, we look forward to, uh, to going over there and uh, having another good competitive game in the South 7 and trying to keep our nose in that playoff hunt, which I think, uh, you know, we still believe that, that wins here are going to really improve our, our playoff seed and, and uh, give us some opportunities to play at home. But also, we want to stay in the playoff hunt as, as well as the conference championship hunt. Uh, we feel like... You know, if we're still looking for maybe a Cahokia loss somewhere, maybe this week with Altoff, and if that happens, we're going to need to win to stay in that. And so there's still a lot of things to play for, conference titles, playoff seedings, and so forth. We're not satisfied with just six wins. Uh, we've got other goals we want to achieve, and, um, you know, uh, beating Carbondale is one of those goals. And is that something that keeps you focused is the fact that, you know, you've got your six, you've clinched that spot, but a seventh win, is a good shot at a home playoff right. game. An eighth win almost guarantees that home playoff game in the first round. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I, and I think the other factor is, you know, Carbonell and Marion are, are a bit of rivals. You know, I think we have teams we would consider bigger rivals, but <clears throat> there's still a rivalry between the two communities, and I think that always adds a little something to the ball game. And and uh, there's other uh, competitive situations between the two schools in basketball and baseball and other sports and soccer. And, so uh, that kind of adds a little fuel to the fire, but it's a, it's a good, healthy rivalry, and uh, I know they'll come to play, and we will too, and uh, ought to be a good night of football. All right, sounds good, Coach. We'll see you Friday. We'll see you then. Marion Head Football Coach Kerry Martin is our guest for the Daily Republican. I'm Tim Petrovich.